Hello everyone, this is TR here. Um, coming to you with a good friend of mine, Isles. Uh, we grew up together. Uh, we've known each other for many decades. We're not going to date ourselves and say how long we've known each other, but uh, hopefully over time you'll you'll get a feel for our friendship and, and our deep connection. Uh, what we're doing here today is what we're going to call uh, the Ezra Johnson Files. This is the first episode we're going to do, and we hope to make this a, a weekly, perhaps, occurrence. We're going to see how it goes and see how people respond. Um, so we hope you enjoy the discussion, and please like, comment, and give us feedback below. So I think we're going to start with five topics, and we're each going to take some time to discuss them. But first of all, how are you doing today, Isles? I'm doing great, actually. I'm ready for football. We're one week away. I'm ready to rock. Should be pretty good. I know. I know. We're both super pumped. We were talking about that on the golf course yesterday. Yep. We, we always have some unique takes. But yep. uh, the first thing I want to ask you, and then, then I'll add in my take, is you know, what does it mean to you to be a Packer fan? I think from growing up in Wisconsin, I think it's um, it means a lot just because of being around the Packers. I think I've told you before, but a unique experience for me is I worked at a gas station in Appleton, Wisconsin, and even to see at the time uh, Brian Noble come in and get gas, it just makes you feel more like a high school kind of an atmosphere where you have these players around in this small town that makes you almost feel like you have, you know, almost like you were cheering on a high school buddies on a on a basketball team or something like that. It means a lot, and and, it, and you can really feel it too. I think when um, when they lose and you feel the yeah. pain for the week and how much that means to you. So, for to sure. me, it means a lot. I, I, what about you? Yeah, I think I think one of the unique things about uh, the Green Bay Packers is it is a small market team. It's you know it's there is no owner and, and the, it's very much a community thing. You know, as you mentioned, it gives you that high school feel. I couldn't agree more. I mean, when you're born there, the Packers are part of the culture and the tradition of everyone. It's very much a family thing. Ever since I can remember, the family would, uh, you know, sit around, uh, around the television set and get ready for the football game. You usually have a have a Sunday meal, uh, maybe after church, if if we went to church. If we didn't, you know, we still had the meal and got ready for some football. So ever since I can remember, it was very much a family thing. And, and I think that's what it made what makes the Packers really unique. And and the people who grew up outside of Wisconsin may not really fully appreciate that. They might not fully understand how it's how it's part of the culture. It's not something that you're just a fan of because you like it. It's very much is part of how you grow up and what the community rallies around. So um, I, I think it's really special to be a Packer fan, even more special to grow up in that area. Yeah. When you so, were like, I never even asked you this, but like back when you were growing up, did you ever have in like a run in with fame of a Packer? I, for some reason, I'm thinking about Brent Brett Brent Fullwood. Like you went to oh, yeah. Did you go to the signing right. of Brent like at the mall or something? Yeah, like it like it one of the things they were always used to do is is in the big mall in Appleton, which was one of the biggest malls in the area, they'd always have Packers come in and they'd do autograph signing. So uh people would all show up and yeah, I remember uh, getting Brent Fullwood's autograph, and he had uh, these these photos of him in his in his uh, his football outfit, and and it ha it had a pre printed autograph of him on on the pages. What was hilarious is he sat up at the desk, and as he was doing autographs, he would so carefully draw the outline of the pre printed autograph <laughs> and, and give it to all the people. Um, and, and he was a real nice guy. And, and I think you and I both, you know, in high school and growing up, we've run into Packers, you know, at the mall or, you know, when we were old enough to drink and, 
and we went and experienced some nightlife in Appleton, you would run into players all the time, even opposing teams, which would stay in downtown Appleton. You would run into some of those players. I remember, yeah, I remember uh, running into Tony Mandrich in the mall, uh, the biggest bust in Packer history. But, you know, um, you know th that goes along the same thing with the whole Brian Noble story. Yeah. You, know, you run into these people and, 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 you know, just have these quick conversations and it really made you feel a part of the team, even more so than um, in other big city uh, locations. Yep. So um, if we segue to the next topic, I would say, what are some of your very favorite Packer memories as far as the actual football team and the actual games? Mm. There's a lot. Uh, I would say... <laughs> I know one that I shared with you, and and I don't know if you remember this. I don't even remember where we were, but I, I think that um, one of the coolest moments, at least for me, who grew up through the 70s and 80s when they weren't very good, um, and then they had that one year with the Magic Man where they got very close to, to doing or making the playoffs, and they lost right at the end. But when they finally kind of felt established to me the very moment had to be when you or I were at some party watching them play the 49ers in the playoffs and there was an interception by Craig Newsom yes and and it was like at that moment I don't know why that moment sticks out for me but it felt like holy cow like we are actually really good and we have a chance to go to the Super Bowl and that moment was so exciting so I think that's one big one. And then I, I know I've told you this one before, but it's it's worth sharing is I was fortunate enough to have my father uh, get tickets to a game, um, one of the very first Monday night football games against the Washington Redskins with that's Joe right. Th Joe Theismann. And it was uh, they called it the game because it was just back and forth offense. The Packers had like Lynn Dickey as the QB. And I think the final score was – 48 to 47 and uh the packers won on a missed mark mosley i think it was mark mosley yeah. field goal attempt right. and the coolest thing was that you know the packers stadium is an oval obviously and my dad and i were on about the five yard line um looking down and we were on they were kicking the field goal on the opposing side of the field and so when mark mosley kick the field goal or miss the field goal to us it looked like it went through but oh. on both both ends of the uh end of the stadium started cheering and it kind of like went around the stadium it was a really cool moment because again that's during an era when green bay was obviously not very good so yeah what about and, you and and i remember well just to quickly uh respond to that is is I remember that game almost as if it was yesterday. It's funny how time flies like that. Yeah. But um, I recently went back and on YouTube saw that whole game on YouTube. So really, any of, yeah. So anyone out there who's interested in this game, it was a phenomenal game, and you can see it on YouTube. I forget what year it was. I think it was in the it was in the eighties, right? Yep. Early 80s. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. Yep. It was Monday night against the Washington Redskins, and that was a legendary game. So, just out of curiosity, who, if you recently watched it, just because I can't remember because I'm so old, is <laughs> who, who, who was, who were like, who was the main wide receiver? Was it Lofton? I believe so, but I, to be honest, I buzzed through it and. There were no, so no many worries. cool memories and specific things I was looking for that I didn't uh, look at the players specifically. Um, I know you're always paying attention more to the line anyway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very much a line guy. I like to watch blocking <laughs> pattern, and I yeah. want to see how the line is moving in unison. Exactly. But I, I was basically looking for clips of gang green in that video. <laughs> so to say I watched it from start to finish – um, would be a lie. But yeah. anyway, we will talk about Gang Green in an upcoming episode. The dude was legendary. So yeah. 
<laughs> won't say any more at this time. Yeah. But, you know, as, as far as good Packer memories, one of the v very earliest memories I have, you know, uh, of watching football was going to the game opening. It was uh, sometime, it was 1980, I believe. And I was just a little kid and I barely remember much. But that was the game that ended at a six, six to six tie. So it was a terribly boring game. But the uh, Packers in overtime marched down the field and they were going for a field goal. Um, and Chester Markle was the, the kicker then. And he kicked his, he kicked the field goal and it was actually blocked. Um, but it bounced right back into his gut and he ran around the corner uh, for a touchdown to win the game. So I clearly remember the, the block kick and the touchdown. And the funny thing is we later learned that Chester Markle was, was high on Coke <laughs> that game. <laughs> so, you know, and the thing is, is, let's be honest, the dude looked like a serial killer with those glasses. <laughs> He did. I'll insert a I'll insert a picture of him right here. Then yeah. I don't think there's any doubt there. But that was definitely a, a very clear early memory about the Packers. But I've had lots of them. I've been fortunate enough to go to a lot of games. Uh, my grandfather had season tickets since like the 1950s, so I got to go to a couple games every year um, until recent years. But um, tons of games that I've been to, some very legendary games that I, I think we'll cover in the future. So um, let's let's get to today. So uh, what are what are you thinking about the 2022 Packers? What are your feelings? What's your gut feeling? How the season's going to go? I think it's going to be a little bit like how a lot of their years start where the first couple of games, I always think about how Rogers doesn't like to play in the preseason and he's probably right. But I got to be honest that it seems like ever since he started doing that, that the first game or first two games offensively, they seem to be a little bit out of sync. And this year I'm expecting even more of that just because um, with all the new wide receivers coming in, he doesn't have the one guy he has been working with for years and years. And, and I just saw that even Lazard now looks like he's doubtful. I don't know what happened, but I saw just on um, on the news tonight that he's doubtful. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, so I think how I kind of see it playing out is there's going to be a lot of short stuff. They're going to probably be using the, the, the two backs to dump balls off and maybe even um, try to get I think he's got a good connection from what I've been reading with Sammy Watkins. And then the dubs kid looks like he could potentially be, you know, a really great addition. I have a feeling they're going to use him, but maybe he'll be a bust. I'm not really sure. It's really interesting to see yeah. defensively. If they can be everything that, that they're going to be, I think at some point, once they put it all together, it's just going to be so neat to see everybody healthy on defense with the tools that they have, they could be lethal. And so that matchup then in week one, which I, I know is going to be a point we, we were going to talk about, but will be such an interesting matchup because of the fact that, you know, I think the Vikings have a very good defense or excuse me, good offense. And they're going to be going up what could be one of the best, if not the best, defense in the league this year. So I'm hoping that that we can just get by in those first couple of weeks on our defense while the offense kind of finds their rhythm. And hopefully by that week two, week three, you know, Rogers will kind of figure things out how we're gonna how we're gonna work with the new wideouts. So yeah, you know, I I completely agree with just about everything you said. I mean, it's very clear that they start a bit slow um offensively at least um especially now that we've expanded to the 17 game season you only have three preseason games that means there's even less time for um especially the starters to even practice together and get any game time experience i don't think there's any doubt that the offense might struggle a little bit or take some time to find their feet you know we also know that you know, the offensive line isn't quite set. 
We don't know the status of Bakhtiari and Jenkins yet. And from what we've seen in the preseason, uh, there are quite a few question marks as far as um, the right side of the line, the guard and the right guard, uh, right tackle positions. So um, that's going to be interesting to see. And then you throw on top the uh, lack of uh, uh, years of experience with these receivers. I think you're spot on the money there. That it's going to take some time. They're going to use a lot of uh, uh, backfield short passes and, and will probably be a more of a running offense to start with. But, you know, I, I think Dobbs is the real deal. I think he's going to be a really good NFL player. He might not blow it up this year um, because, hey, it takes time in this league, you know. Um, there are very few uh, receivers who come in as a rookie and make such huge impacts uh, like a Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase. So um, I think we have to just temper expectations, but, Hey, let's let's expect that eventually they're going to find their rhythm. Um, from a defensive perspective, I am very excited. I think they're going to be awesome. Yeah. And I think the key point you made there, Isles, is that as long as they stay healthy, um, they're really deep up front. Their front seven is going to be deep. Uh, we're a little thin at the edge rushers and maybe in the defensive backfield. So let's just stay healthy. Let's play fast. Let's swarm to the ball. Let's hit. You know, <laughs> let's uh, play downhill. Yeah. You know, me being a defensive guy, that, that's that's the type of football I love to see anyway. You know? Pad level. What's <laughs> <laughs> as, yeah. as Mike McCarthy used to say, it's all yeah. about the pad level. We've got to improve the pad level. we yeah. got to stack success. You know, all those sayings like that what do, so what do you do you think do you have any do you have any vision on like how you foresee any differences and how their offense will look once things are gelling in 2022 like you know what i mean i feel like the last couple of years those games they've lost in the playoffs as much as we love rogers and we loved adams it just felt like the forcing of the ball to Adams in the playoffs was almost the demise of not scoring key touchdowns. Even in that the game against Tampa Bay, I remember them trying to force it into him. And I'm, you know, there's somebody wide open. Or you look at that pass last year. I forgot who it was who was in the middle of the field who was wide Lazard. open. Lazard, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. It's just I'm almost thinking it could be a benefit once you know if there's not like this perfect standout that he seems to get like this relationship with and wants to hit that guy in all cases this way we might have like more guys and might benefit I, the squad I, I totally i totally agree with that but you and you hit it on the hit it on the head once again it, it's when once they start gelling and the offense becomes established i mean you're not gonna replace a Devonte adams the guy was a an amazing talent and and rogers had such faith in him that you're right i think he was forcing things at times expecting Devonte to make him an amazing play which he did yeah. all the time but i i very much prefer an offense that is spread out i yeah. love an offense where you just don't know where you're gonna hit him from you know you, yeah. Yeah. you from from every angle, you can attack them, and, and I love that type of offense. So, um, speaking of offense and defense and what's going to happen, we both have the pleasure of living in Viking land. We grew up in Wisconsin near Green Bay, but we live in Viking land. Let's talk about our hatred of the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I think you the hear first thing, some some sob go school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said the pleasure to live here, and and definitely during football season it is not a pleasure to live here. Um, I I think living here has abs absolutely made me hate the Vikings even more. And kind of going back in history, at least for me as a little kid growing up, I'll never forget even that season with Magic Man. What ended up happening is. The very last game of the season came down. It was a Monday night football game with, I believe, Minnesota 
than somebody else. And if Minnesota would have lost that game, Green Bay would have been in. I could be getting that wrong. But some way or another, uh, Vikings got in, and, and the Packers that year did not, even though they had this magical season with the Magic Man. Oh, and yeah. um, so to me right there, it made me even hate the Vikings more. And I was still living in Wisconsin at the time. And then coming to this state and seeing the I, what I feel is a lackluster level of football expertise a, amongst the whole fan base. And then they try to argue with you and you're just it's irritating. Um, and I went to a party last year. Uh, two years ago, and, and Green Bay just demolished the Vikings. I can't remember what game it was, and there was a lot of good friends I had there, but I was just riding them the entire time that I was an elite football mind, That's and I right. like was drawing stuff on the board. I think I was tell, telling you about when well, I had a couple drinks that night. And a good time. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely despise. I think they are by far my least favorite team in the NFL, and so living here is a nightmare. Yeah. But what about you? Are you with me? Uh, I, I no, I, I I totally agree. I despise them more than any other franchise, and a large majority of that reason is because of the fan base. You know, the thing that drives me absolutely insane is that at the beginning of the season or just before a Packer Vikings game, you always have these people who have smart ass things to say, and and just these cocky comments about the Vikings and then the Packers come in and kick their ass. And then the next day they act like they never cared in the first yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. biggest fair weather fans I have ever seen. In fact, most of them are like, Oh, I don't care. I don't watch. I don't watch. They, they suck or they always disappoint. Uh, so I'm not going to watch, you know, I have better things to do with my time. But, you know, it's, it's only at those specific moments when, when they're trying to get under our skin is, we, is when they bring up the Vikings or some smart-ass comment about, about the Vikings, like, like I was saying. So I, I just find them kind of like a, a soulless, fake fan base, right? Much like their stadium on that fake grass in that fake building with the fake crowd noise and all that stuff. It just it just drives me crazy. But other than that, it's a pretty nice place to live. I mean, we we have, <laughs> we have pretty much access to anything we want here. And um, people are generally nice, except uh, when talking football. So Another thing I hate, too, that we just have to mention is the whole, like when Green Bay goes to the playoffs and the Vikings are not in the playoffs, that they just – live and die to like oh yeah on green bay to lose that's that's their playoffs basically every year yeah, yeah. you know they're, and so. they're total bandwagon you know they if the vikings are winning or get into the playoffs everyone asks like i'm the biggest viking fan in the world yeah, yeah where were you when you started the season one and four and you couldn't be bothered to talk football or even watch a game so, yeah F you, I do. You know. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm with sorry. You. I'm getting all hot and bothered <laughs> by that topic. So let's let's move let's on move to on. the. Yeah. yeah, let's move on. We'll yeah. save our anger for a different time. Um, what about week one? What What do you think about this first week game against the Vikings? I got to be honest. Before when I was drinking this like this, I I was wishing that this was a a purple crush or whatever. <laughs> um, you know what I'm talking? Or grape crush or whatever you know, like Rogers was drinking. Uh, week one. If I'm being dead honest, I'm concerned. Again, I kind of alluded to what my thoughts were before. I just feel like Vikings have a very good offense right now. They're that you know. I think Cook is obviously super good. You can dump it off. He can he can catch the short ball and and go. He can explode from behind the backfield and, and break one away. Um, Jefferson's crazy good. I still wish that we would have found a way to pick him up because I can't imagine what he would have been like with Rodgers. Um, and then I can't think of the other guys. I know obviously Thielen, but the, even some of those other receivers and in, in the tight end that they picked up, I think, last year, they're solid and they've been, they have a better line. So offensively, I feel like 
they might be at a better place than we are right now just because we have a bunch of new guys um, figuring stuff out on the line right now and making sure that you know we kind of solidify who the Packers are going to be on offense this year. So when I look at it that way, um, I definitely feel like they're going to have the advantage in week one. I'm not saying they're going to by the middle of the season, but the interesting thing will be is that their defense is not even close to what uh, Green Bay has. So seeing that matchup between their offense against our defense, I think if we can get to Cousins early because he's kind of a little wuss when he gets hit, <laughs> he's a, he's a, he is. Yeah, he's, yeah I understand. Right? He's one yeah. of those guys where when you get to him early, he's a totally he he'll start you know f- making dumbass passes and and we can get a pick that and those the turnover ratio could go to our side and we could end up winning the game and doing just enough on offense to get by, but we can't get behind early. I think that's the key thing. We we can't let them come out of the gate with a stupid horn and all this skull crap, and yeah. we're down fourteen early and we're trying to fight back with this kind of you know, all these new kids on offense. So yeah. I don't know. What do you think, bud? Yeah, I really hate playing the Vikings week one. And the reason is, is weird stuff happens week one. Yeah. And it goes back to the same thing that we've been talking about. The lack of a preseason, the lack of playing starters during the preseason um, weird stuff happens, not only with the Packers, but all across the NFL. I mean, if you if you start almost any season and you look at the first couple games and you pick out who you think are going to be the great teams in the NFL, write that down and come back at the end of the year and look at that piece of paper, you'll likely find that it's changed, right? Um, I feel like we don't know what – the team is until about four games into the season. So from that perspective, I wish we didn't have to face the Vikings right out of the hatch because I hate them so much and I want the Packers to just crush them. Um, So with that said, I won't be surprised no matter what happens this game. I'm going to try to enjoy it and hopefully the Packers come out on top. But even if the Packers started one and two, one and three, I'm not panicking. Um, yeah. Once again, you know, I think what matters is getting to the playoffs and getting going into the playoffs on a hot streak. Um, so the beginning of the season really isn't really isn't as important. It, it, it's more uh, uh, ceremonial. It, it really gets us excited. We're all chomping at the bit for some real meaning of football but um weird stuff happens so one one question that i have for you just out of curious uh or out of curiosity is how do you feel about if this year they got into the playoffs but they got in as like a wild card or something like that do you think that kind of eases off the pressure almost on on them to play more freely than being the number one seed and they they seem to have played just a little tight um, in some of those yeah. games or, I, or I hear what you're saying that? I hear what you're saying I think uh you know I think every game in the playoffs there's a bit of prof- pressure the expectations are pretty large when you're a Green Bay Packer or playing as a Packer yeah. um but I do think there is something to be said about um, not having those bye weeks in yeah. continuing the flow from the end of the season into the playoffs and yeah. riding that momentum all the way through. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, while on paper it sounds great to have a bye, sit your players down, rest them, get healthy, I would trade that and have a team i'd rather have a team that's in sync and continuing momentum i think that's what happened in the 2009 season when the packers won the super bowl in 2010 you know they were a wild card barely got into the playoffs and they just rolled and we're seeing that more and more these days yeah Um, you're not always seeing the number one seeds being a shoe in for the super bowl so um I, I'm assuming by that question you're thinking the same thing. What do you think? 
No, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I just feel like it's it's there's it kind of puts this undue pressure on you when you're number one, you're at home. There's like a little bit of a pressure there. And I feel like when they played in that 2009 season, I'll never forget that because they just were firing on all cylinders. It felt like a, like we got nothing to lose kind of a feel and opening it up and, and, and rather than playing not to lose. Um, Yes. And I even, you know, and we're probably getting off topic a little bit, but no, it's no, that's perfectly it's an fine. Inter- it's an interesting thing because I really feel like why that um, McCarthy actually was a coach towards at the beginning of his career, who really played with like this freeness in big games. Like I can remember when they played the Cardinals and they were losing big, and they came back and almost won the game. Yeah. I can't remember what game that was, and they like did a onside kick right at halftime to try to get back in the game and they got the ball stuff like that but then you looked at the end of his career like right before he was let go as the head coach and there was a lot of games where it felt like he was the Seahawks game where where you're really playing not to lose rather than to win and I feel like even Lafleur has played not to win in some of the big games at home and has to kind of learn from that and open up. So regardless where they play, I want to see them just go for the kill. I feel like, you know, Tom Brady is really good at that. Like they're not done until it's done. They just keep hammering on you until the football game is completely over. And we got to get that kill mentality. And I think the defense is the key to bring in that this year. I feel like they're going to pulverize their opponents into death. It's going to be great. If, if they can be as good as we think they are and they stay healthy, yeah, your offense doesn't need to be out outscoring everyone. Yeah. You know, tons. You can just step on their throats and push. Yeah. <laughs> one, but, one, yeah. one other guy I got to want your opinion on is what kind of year do you think Rashawn Gary is going to have this year? I, you know, I think he's going to be an all pro. Yeah to be a first team all pro. I, I think he has that type of ability. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, offenses plan for him because I think he's a game wrecker. Um, but he has the potential talent to be in a, a, an all pro, first team all pro. So I'm looking for big things from him. So when 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 the Packers drafted him, did is has your opinion changed greatly from the moment that they drafted him to now? Like, of course, I, I think it has, and it's partially because the Packers historically have had this habit of of drafting players out of position. So, for instance, they would uh, uh, draft a defensive lineman and make them an outside linebacker, or they'd take a safety and make them a lot. Vice versa, Ted Thompson did that all the time. And I guess I wasn't sure how Gary fit, but yeah. um, I think uh, what is different about Goot, Goot is that he drafts for uh, massive athletic talent and potential upside, um, and and he thinks a bit differently than Thompson did. So, yeah. what do you think? Um, the yeah. Same time? I- I just think that the way he played the last four or five games of the season last year, he just became like a superstar. And if he can somehow, I think he's going into the season with that same confidence level. I mean, didn't he like rip his bicep or something last year? I can't remember. Was it it, right? He had 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 a hyperextended elbow and it looked really bad. And I don't believe he even missed any time. So. Yeah, and, and he was still just a game wrecker at that yeah. point. In, in that last game against San Francisco, I thought he played outstanding. Like, So if he can come into the season with that same confidence level and pick up right where he left off, like you said, he's definitely a first-team All-Pro. He's going to yeah. be amazing. So, Yeah, it's going to be really fun to watch. Oh. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait for this Sunday to, to watch the game. Um, and I think we'll we'll touch base um, through this streaming platform next week, hopefully. 
Um, yep. We hope everyone enjoys this conversation uh, Isles and I had. We hope to do a lot more. And we're going to throw some links down in the in the video here that uh, that we hope you visit. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us comments. Send us an email at the email address in the link um, asking us questions. So uh, we'd like to take some questions and, and use that as fodder for discussion. Uh, we also hope to bring uh, a few guests on to talk a little bit of football, uh, specifically the guys from the Pack Attack, I think will be really fun to bring on. And, you know, some other subscribers or other people want to talk football. So, um, Chet, it's, Isles, thanks so much for joining. Thank you. It was uh, a pleasure. Buddy. Again uh, next week. And uh, we're, I'm sure I'll see you on the golf course real soon, too. So, sounds like a plan. All right. Thanks, All everyone. Right. Go back. <laughs>